Welcome blues fans, you found another episode of This Week in Blues History. I'm your host, Jimbo Big Train Madsen with Big Train and the Loco Motives. Anyway, let's take a look and see what happened this week in blues history. Let's start by recognizing Larry the Mole Taylor, born on June 26, 1942. While he's best known for his work as a member of Can't Heat, he had been a session bassist for the Monkees and Jerry Lee Lewis. Taylor became a leading proponent and practitioner of the upright bass in the contemporary blues scene. He was quite prominently seen with his upright bass in the live blues film Lightning in a Bottle. Happy birthday to blues singer and pianist St. Louis Jimmy Oden, born June 26th in 1903 in Nashville, Tennessee. He lost both parents by the time he was eight. He sang and taught himself to play the piano, and in his teens, he left home for St. Louis and began performing with the pianist Roosevelt Sykes. After more than 10 years playing together, they both moved to Chicago. It was there that he was St. Louis Jimmy and had a solid performing and recording career for the next four decades. June 26 is also the birthday of Big Bill Brunzi, born back in 1903. His career began in the 1920s, and he played steadily through the following decades. In Europe, Brunzi proved more popular than at any time in the United States, with a prolific recording career there. Two documentary films were made on his life, one in France, one in Belgium. When he died in 1958, he left a recorded legacy which, in sheer size and depth, well exceeds that of any blues artist born this side of the year 1900. His playing style continues to influence blues players today. Chicago bluesman Johnny Big Moose Walker was born on June 27th in 1927. Walker was primarily a piano player, but was also proficient on the electronic organ and even played the bass guitar. Born in Stoneville, Mississippi, Walker moved to Chicago in the late 1950s and over the next decade accompanied Sonny Land Slim, Otis Rush, Muddy Waters, Little Johnny Jones, and Holland Wolf. He got his stage name as a child because of his long flowing hair. Honey Boy Edwards was born in Shaw, Mississippi on June 28, 1915. When he died, he was the last living link to someone who played and traveled with Robert Johnson. For much of his life, Edwards was underappreciated, but his slashing, delta-drenched guitar and gruff vocals were as authentic as blues music in the Delta ever got. Edwards' childhood pals include Tommy McLennan and Robert Petway. Rambling around the South, Honey Boy experienced the great Charlie Patton and often played with Johnson. Chicago producer, songwriter, and bassist, and singer Willie Dixon was born on July 1, 1915 in Vicksburg, Mississippi. Dixon eventually made his way to Chicago, where he won the Illinois State Golden Gloves Heavyweight Championship. Dixon's real recognition was as a songwriter. He wrote Hoochie Coochie Man for Muddy Waters, Evil for Holland Wolf, and My Babe for Little Walter. This established Dixon as Chess Records' most reliable tunesmith, and the Chess Brothers continually pushed Dixon songs on their other artists. Blues player James Cotton was born on July 1 in 1935 in Tunica, Mississippi. At his 1970s peak as a band leader, James Cotton was a bouncing, sweating, whirling dervish of a bluesman, roaring vocals and all but sucking the reeds right out of those defenseless little harmonicas he played. When Little Walter left Muddy Waters' band in 1954, Cotton joined the band, and during the next dozen years, he filled the integral role beside Chicago's blues king with power and precision. Well, we just covered some of the highlights here. If you want to know more about these artists or the other things that happened this week in the blues, be sure to follow our social media pages or visit our website at bigtrainblues.com. We'll have a new episode next week, so we'll see you then.